and this Sunday, I'm going to talk to you about the double portion of faith. And uh, it's an interesting message. And so I want you to set your heart on that. And I want you to be prepared today to hear from the Word of God, the double portion of faith. But before I do that, I want to tell you, um, thank you for being faithful to attending the church. We are so blessed to have you in attendance with us, to be uh, worshiping with us, to be enjoying the house of God with us. And uh, we're, we're, we're just blessed by your presence. We're blessed to be able to pray for you. We're blessed to be able to minister to you. Uh, we're blessed to be able to uh, uh, share with you when you have a need, pray with you, visit you whenever you are in the hospital. We're, we're blessed to do that. Now, next Sunday is going to be uh, Mother's Day, and we're going to have a baby dedication next Sunday. Uh, we're going to be dedicating Maddox, and uh, um, that's going to be a wonderful time, and we don't want you to miss it. And, of course, we want you to be here on Mother's Day so that we can honor all the mothers in the church. So, uh, uh, looking forward to having you next Sunday. Again, I want to remind you about the missions offering. Uh, please be prepared to help us with that. And uh, then on June the 9th, uh, there will be an ordination service going on. I'll announce it now in uh, uh, Brown Summit. And I'll be being ordained by the IPHC at that time. And I'd like to invite you to come if you desire to. And so that's June the 9th. And I think it starts at 10 o'clock in the morning, maybe something like that. But anyway, those are the announcements of upcoming services and times. So let's enjoy the ministry of the Word this morning. I, I uh, do want to say this, though, before I start preaching. Uh, Mom is doing a wonderful job on Wednesday night, and uh, you don't want to miss that. She, she, her teaching is, it tells you things you didn't know. It tells you things about the Word of God you didn't know. And uh, uh, very interesting, provocative thinking teaching. And uh, so you don't want to miss Wednesday night. Now it would also be nice if on the nights when I teach you'd come too. <laughs> Amen. We appreciate you and look forward to Wednesday nights. We have between 10 and 15 people on Wednesday nights, which is if, if the bigger churches would have half of their crowd on Wednesday night, they would think they had gone to heaven. We have about half, of, or right at half of the crowd come on Wednesday night. And so, uh, wrong door, dear. Right here. <laughs> right there. Yeah, that's okay. I get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, she, she'd have been out there really pitch on you, wouldn't she? And, uh, but, uh, Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Uh, Wednesday night. And so we're blessed to have you on Wednesday night. And you just don't want to miss anything Mom does. Because it, there's an in-depth to it. There's a teaching to it. There's, let, me, let me put it to you this way. It, when I say in-depth, it's simplistically. It's simplistically put so that we can understand it. And that's the great thing about how she teaches. It's very simplistically put. So try to make your way to church on Wednesday night uh, to hear uh, the teaching of God's Word. So, uh, if you have your Bible, stand with me in honor of the reading of God's Word. And there will be about five or six verses. This is abnormal for me, but there will be about five or six verses that I'm going to read for you this morning. And it comes from John 15, 3 through 10. And uh, it reads like this. Now you're clean through the Word which I've spoken unto you, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in, in vine. No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, 
so shall you be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, let me go back a second. In verse 7, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you herein. Herein what? Herein the abiding of me and my words in you, and you asking what you want, and receiving it, being done to you. Herein, in that, is my Father glorified. That you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. Now, Father, we thank you for the word of God. <coughs> I ask you today to open our eyes that we can see, our ears that we can hear, and our hearts that we can understand what the word of God is saying to us. I pray, God, that the word would be given to us in such a way through the Holy Ghost that it can be applied directly to our lives, and God, that we can be changed and transformed by it. I thank you today, Jesus, because of what you have done for us to provide us with this scripture. Now, God, let us look at it, learn it, and internalize it, and let us be changed. And we'll praise you now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. And you can be seated. Now, I begun this message with these scriptures because I wanted you to see the first part of verse 4. He said, Abide in me, and I need. Now, I'm talking about faith today. I'm talking about the double portion of faith. And I want you to see that. But in order for you to, to be able to live in and walk in and understand the double portion of faith. Now bear in mind that Jesus taught in Mark chapter 11 verse 22. And he said, have the faith of God. I told you that last week. And then here he talks about abiding in me and I in you. And then the second part of verse 5. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye or you can do nothing. Then in verse 7, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you'll ask what you will and it shall be done. Now, all of these things say the same thing essentially. That Jesus and I in the spirit world abide or live in and through each other. Now that's significant that you understand that. And I've harped on that pretty deeply since I've been here. That Christ is in you. And that you're in Him. Jesus said if you abide in me. And I abide in you. If you abide in me. And my words abide in you. That is so critical that we get the concept. Because Jesus said that you would never be able to do anything. Unless that was the first foundation premise that you operated from. You would be able to do nothing without me. If you don't abide in him and he abides in you and his word abides in you, you can't live in the love he talked about. Looky here. He said, as my father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Without abiding in him and his word abiding in you, Continuing in his love seems, according to the scripture, to have become a problem. Because he said, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Continue ye, meaning, abide in me. Continue to stay in me. Continue to remain in me. And that will keep you in my love if you keep my, what? Commandments. You shall abide in my love. So there's something in this thing with regards to abiding in Him. So if the Word doesn't abide in you, and if, if He doesn't abide in you, and if you don't abide in Him, then there becomes the problem with keeping the commandments because you won't know them. And continuing in His love because you won't know it or understand it either. He, his, who He is, is described and depicted in two methods for the child of God. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of truth, is describing Jesus day by day in the spirit world. The Word of God is describing Jesus day by day in, watch this, the natural world and the 
the spirit word. When you pick up the word of God, are you holding the Bible? The written truth that was breathed by it describes God. It's in the natural world. It describes Christ. You can hold it. You can read it. It will never be discerned, however, until the Spirit of God in the spirit world grips you and begins to internalize that into your inner man. It will never become what it could become. You will never abide in Him and He abide in you if the Bible is no better than war and peace and a novel to you, in other words. God has put it into two realms. He's put it in the spiritual realm and He's put it into the hands of man. And when you read the Word and abide in the Word and stay in the Word, through the Word, you're going to do two things. You're going to walk in love and you're going to keep His commandments. Can you say amen? amen. Now, this is critical when we look at this. Because the word abide, as I've already stated, means to remain, to stay, or to abide in a place, for a time, or in a condition. Now when Jesus died on Calvary, He died so that the condition of man could be changed. So that man's condition could change both in his spiritual position but also in his time. Because in time, man would be changed into an eternal being that would be able to inherit the kingdom of God. And without that abiding, man's time and place would be to inherit an eternal hell. So the key word there is condition. Because place and time are about the same for the child of God or the sinner. The place is going to be different in that one is going to live eternally in heaven or eternally in hell. The time is always going to be eternal, but the condition is the key word. Because the man who abides in Christ, condition has been translated, transformed into the image of our dear Son, Jesus Christ so that he can live a life in a time and a place where he abides in him. Now, Jesus said, if I remain or I stay in you and you remain or you stay in me, then you will bear the fruit of abiding in me. Well, because with me, now watch this, Without me, you cannot. That's what Jesus told them. He said, without me, you can do nothing. With me, you cannot. But without you, I will not. The sinner man does not have the ability nor the right to call on God and expect God to do one single solitary thing on his behalf. Because his God is the God of the world. His God is the God of hell. His God is the God of the 17 works of the flesh according to Galatians chapter 5. His God is a God of murder, anger, strife, wrath, disobedience, fornication, adultery. But the God that you serve is a God that has given you the ability to understand that there are fruits that you can bear, that there is a condition that you can be in whereby you can can know God and according to Galatians chapter 5 and 22 you can bear the fruit of love, joy, peace long suffering, goodness, gentleness kindness, faith meekness and temperance that the word of God said will build the kingdom and there is no law against it. Hallelujah! <laughs> Jesus was telling the disciples that I am going to be in you with you and working through you as you minister for me and bear the fruit and become of the character and become of the nature of me and my Father. Jesus said in John 15, I am the vine and you are the branches and with me you will bear fruit. Bearing the fruit 
of the nature of God. Bearing the fruit of the nature of Christ. Now, watch this next line. He said, I will be your source. If you abide in me, I will be your source. But this is where I'm going today. Watch this now. Because everybody's preached that. It takes no genius to stand up and tell you that Oral Roberts said that the vine is your source. God is my source. And God is the one that does all of this stuff with me. God is the one that does it for me. He has given me promise upon promise upon promise of what the source is going to do for me. But as I begin to study the scripture and I found out when the word said, if you abide in me and I abide in you and my word abides in you, you'll ask what you will and it shall be done to you. Something hit me in the forehead that absolutely shook me and woke me up in the middle of the night and this is what it was. He said, I'll be your source. That's nothing new. Without God, without the Lord in your life, you're separated from God. Time, place, and condition, you do not abide. But with God in your life, your time, your place, and your condition are sheltered in the arms of an almighty God. Psalms 91 said that under the shadow of His wings is where you're hidden by God. Bless God, you are cared for. You are taken care of. There's no need for fear. There's no need to ever feel like that God, when you call on Him, is not going to answer you. So then, we look at the Word and find out that God is our source. There's no doubt about it. But then, He said, now this is what source means. Source means I will be the one who provides what you are looking for. Now I want to ask you today, what is it you're looking for from God? What is it you're looking for God to do for you? What is it that you need God to do for you? What is it that you're crying out on the inside for God to do for you? What is it that your family needs God to do for you? What is it that your job needs God? What is it that you personally have on the inside of you that you know that God needs to take from you, deliver from you, bless you without it? What is it? He said, I am the source. I will be the one who will provide you what you're looking for. Every man. Did you know the word of God said at one point in the book of Matthew, all men seek Jesus. Every man is seeking God. Every man has a place built on the inside of him where he's seeking God. Someone said, prove that to me. When a man goes out and seeks women, he's seeking the whole of love. When a man goes out and seeks a high, he's seeking the hole that is left on the inside of him because he can't satisfy the need for love and love of himself. When a man goes out and seeks drink, he's seeking something that will satisfy the need for nurture and the need to bring out of him something that he is not, something that he doesn't have. When a man is looking for anything in the world, it can be money, Houses, cars, land, it could be anything that keeps you from, from finding out what it is you're really after. Because when you read after these people that seek these things, they all say the same thing in the end. I am not satisfied. I've got the world, but I am not happy. I've got a great husband, but I am not happy. I've got a good job, but I am not happy. Everything I look at draws my attention just like the apple on the tree to eat. And it says to me, if I just had that, have you ever heard the statement, the grass is always greener on the other side? You know what I'm talking about there. People are searching and looking for the thing. What is it you're searching and looking for? Find it in the cross. Find it in the resurrection. Find it in the sea. Find it in the place. Find it in the person. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Find it in the man of a double portion of faith. Find it in him because in him and only in him will the inner man, your inner soul, your soul be satisfied by the fatness of the land of Almighty God. But watch this now. He said, I'm looking. I will provide you the thing you're looking for. He said, I'll be your source. And you, meaning me and you, 
will be. Now watch it now. Jesus is source. Jesus is source. You will serve the function of living out and continuing my work and my faith in the earth. See, we knew that Jesus was our source. But no one ever connected the second phase of it. If you abide in me, I am your source. If I abide in you, then you have become my source. Because out of you is going to come love, joy, peace, goodness, gentleness, meekness, temperance, and faith. That will be the nature of me. And against such there is no law. See that? I'll be your source and you'll be my source. I'll be what you're looking for. Watch this now. And you will be what I'm looking for. Jesus said, if I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men un I'll be looking for you at Calvary. When I be lifted up, I'll be looking for you, Frank. I'll be looking for you. I'll be looking for you. I'll draw you to me because I'm going to be what you're looking for and you're going to be what I'm looking for. I'm going to abide in you and you're going to abide in me and the Word is going to abide in you and all of a sudden greater works becomes the normal event of the day for the child of God that the Lamb of God lives in as his source and lives out of as the source using man in the earth. Oh my God. Now let's look at how Jesus was supposed to complete this. He said in verse 7, If you abide in me, my word abides in you. Ask what you will and it will be done to you. First John 4 and 4 said, Ye are, now watch this now, of God. We're going we're gonna to honor all the mothers up here the other, the, uh, next week. And, and somebody says, who's your mom? And I say, Irma Sprechner. And they'd say, well, you're of Irma Sprechner. And I'd say, yeah. And she would be the person that I am of because she birthed me. You see that? Well, John said, ye are of God. You were birthed by God through Jesus and through His blood and therefore you are His little children. And you have overcome them. Now watch this. Because your mama was so smart and she's still alive at 94 years old. Amen. Glory to God. That's my name. Didn't say that, no, did it? It said, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now watch this right here, because this is where I'm going today. Galatians chapter 2.16. I want you to understand that. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Greater is the source that is what you're looking for than he that's in the world. Greater is the source that lives on the inside of you than he that is in the world. Greater is the source that is living out of you than he that is in the world. Now if the source is greater and the source is inside of you and you became his source to the world, then how in the world can the source that's in you not make the source that's living out of you to be greater and greater and do greater works than he did? source, not make the next source great. Jesus said he would. Jesus said he would and now I'm about to tell you how he was going to do it. Galatians 2.16 said knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. Now watch that big bold letters. <coughs> but of the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in. Now watch that. Do you see the of in the bold letters? 
and the end in Jesus Christ. In the testaments that are being written today, both of those words would be tabbed in most testaments as the end. And the other would not be there. Because the hidden truth of the Bible is that you have a source whom you believe in. His name is Jesus Christ. But you have a faith that works through you as His source. And that is the faith of Jesus Christ. Did you ever think about that? Jesus' faith, His own faith, is operated through the source that God gave Him when He changed you and saved you and redeemed you and made you the righteousness of God. All of a sudden, the faith of Christ began to operate from the source of faith through your belief in faith to Him, and now that faith from Him is operating through you so that you can look at the world and do what Jesus said, and greater than these shall you do, because I go away. I'm going away, and you're going to have a source on the inside of you, a faith on the inside of you that's going to be from the one that went away. It's going to cause you to be a witness of me and draw me unto me and bless me and bless yourself and walk with God and God with you back to the garden of Eden, back in the cool of the day, back and blessed. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. I'm back and I'm blessed. Glory to God. He said it twice then. He said that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no man be justified. The word justified means that he would make you absolutely not guilty before God Almighty. And if you should sin, he would be your advocate through his faith to stand in front of God and say that woman Tracy, that's my girl. I believe for her. I went to the cross for her. I died for her. God forgive her of her sins. I'm taking her place today. My blood has covered her and now she is whole and accepted. Let her come in here and plead. Let her come in here and pray. Let her come in here and tell you what she needs. What a God we serve. Now listen to this. Greater works in you. Colossians 1 27. You've heard me quote it many times. He said to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ. Now watch the word. In you. Christ the source in you. You the source you, the source, operating in the hope of His glory. You, the source. You, operating in the faith of Him. Not in your own faith. Your faith got you into the faith of Him. The measure that you had caused you to believe on Him. Now once you have believed or believed on Him and been justified by the faith of Christ, now all of a sudden you begin to walk the world as a different man. Paul called you a new what? Creation in Christ. You were what created new? What was it that was created? Your spirit was created new. Your communion was created new. Your union was created new. Your relationship was created new. Well, now you were tapped into the source, Jesus Christ, and you became the source that Christ uses in the world because Acts 1 and 8 said that you would be witnesses of me unto Judea, Jerusalem, Samaria, and the unmost parts of the world, and you would be the one by whom the faith of God comes into the earth, is delivered unto man, is preached unto man, and the greater works that Jesus promised would be done because of His faith through you. It is Christ. It's not you. It is Christ. 
He provides you with his own faith. This is where the devil has lied to us. The devil has lied to us and said, well, obviously, my life is torn and shattered and I've got problems and I'm saved, but I've got problems and issues. I, 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 my faith isn't great enough. The Bible said faith comes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Faith comes if you abide in me and my word abides in you. You'll ask what you will and it'll be done for you. Faith comes. It comes from Christ through His Word, from Him, and works through you as the source that God through Jesus drew every man to Himself and gave you the precious gift of faith from God through Jesus. Galatians 2.16 uses that term twice. Galatians 2.20. Now watch this now. Watch this now because it, that all sounds foreign. Because all of your life you've been taught just have faith. If you, if you, if you have faith, if you have it, you have it, you have it, you have to believe. You, you have to do it. It's all on you. It's all on you. It's all on you. Everything's up to you. I have to ask you a question. How many of you died for yourself? How many of you died for you? How many of you hung on the tree? How many of you did, did uh, uh, they hang up a nail to nails and all it wasn't about you? It was about him. It was about what he did. It was about how he lived. It was about what he accomplished. It was about what he did. And you then believing and using your faith to believe on him, watch what Paul said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live yet, not I. But Christ, liveth in me. He is my source. Now watch this now. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of God. The faith of the Son of God. He was my source. I am His source. He is my source. He saved me. He made me righteous. He justified me. He sanctified me. He saved me. He gave me the hope of eternal life, the promise of eternal life, and the life that I now live in my flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God. It's not my faith that's being used. It's Jesus' faith. It's Jesus' faith. My faith has been in him. My faith has said he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. My faith has said that I was a sinner, lost and undone without God. And then when I did, the Bible said that I became a new creation. And the source of my salvation came to live in me and exhibit himself in me. And the fruit that I bear is the fruit of his faith. It is listed in Galatians 5, 22 and 23 as a fruit of the Spirit. Your faith, ladies and gentlemen, is the faith of Jesus, the Son of all my That's what you live by. You don't live by yourself. You don't operate by yourself. You don't do deeds by yourself. Not if you are a child of the living God. Because you abide in Him. You stay in Him. You remain in Him. And your time, your place, and your condition is such that you have abided in Him. So that He works in you, through you, from His faith. Yeah. Who loves me? Loved me. He loved you enough, ladies and gentlemen, that he wasn't going to go to the cross and leave you on your own. He wasn't going to go to the cross and leave you in a position where you might make it or you might not. Jesus sending his own faith. The life that I now live, I live, look at the word, by by, by the faith of the Son of God. The life that I now live. Because I have taken the measure of faith that is in me. That God gave to every man as a gift. 
and I've applied that measure to faith to believe on the Son of all my God. I am saved. Now my righteousness comes by the Son of God, by His faith. My justification comes by His faith. My righteousness, my sanctification, my salvation, my redemption all come by the same measure, by the same man. The measure of the stature of the fullness of God in Christ Jesus given to me so that His faith in me, I as the source of His faith, can look the world eyeball to eyeball and say, greater is He that's in me than He that's in the world. Greater is He that's working in me than He that's in the world. Greater is He that's supporting me than He that's in the world. Greater is He that's providing for me than He that's in the world. Greater is He that is working through me in me and upon my life and everything that I touch than he that's in the world. Greater, greater, greater. I am the source of the faith of Jesus Christ and I live by his faith. Yes. The life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. He is my double portion of faith. The greater one operates through me by faith so that once I believe, he through me can bear fruit to the glory of the Father. Now, John 15, 8 said, Herein, herein is my Father glorified. Now, I want to ask you, if you're saved today, and you know it, but every place your foot turns, there's trouble. Every place you go, there seems to be a problem. You go from one crisis to another, I want to ask you, is that truly glorifying God? Now, some trouble and some adversity is coming to grow you, and I know that. Some trouble and some adversity is coming to, to help you, and I know that. How do I know that? Because that's how it came to Jesus. It came to Jesus the same way. Adversity walked Him to the cross. Trouble and trials walked Him to the cross. He was absolutely denied and accused by those brethren that had walked close to Him. And in all of that, he glorified God. But listen to what the Word said. I will keep Him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. Don't you know today, friend, that in adversity, if you have a calm and peaceful mind, you better bet and know that the peace in the middle of the storm is what Jesus walked with. He had peace every step of the way because He was operating from the faith of God by what He saw and what He heard. And if you're living from trouble to trouble and spot to spot of trial and trial, I want to ask you the question, have you, are you living in faith and are you living in the peace that keeps your mind out of the fray, living for God and glorifying God in every step you take? If not, I challenge you, abide in Him and He in you. For the faith of Jesus Christ is the thing, the answer that from Him, if you abide in Him and He abides in you, from Him, He will give you peace in the middle of the storm. Jesus was on the boat and He was asleep in perfect peace. They were on top of the ship thinking, oh, we're going to die. And David said to him, how can you sleep at this moment? I'm telling you how he could sleep at that moment. Because he had the peace of God that ruled in his heart. And when he got up, he said, oh, gee, a little faith because you forgot who the faith was from. It's from the man in the bottom of the boat. And if the man in the bottom of the boat, if the man resting in the bottom of the boat, if the man at peace in the bottom of the boat, is at peace that you ought to be also. Amen. How true. John 6, 57 said, ye shall live by me. You'll preach by me. You'll have ministry faith by me. You'll be righteous by me. You'll have all the provision of redemption by me. God set Jesus forth for that provision, ladies and gentlemen. God set him forth for that provision. Now, I want to go to something because I've got to get done here. I'd like to tell you about Isaiah 53. Where the blood of Christ made it so that you would be forgiven and changed, so that you'd have peace and be healed. But I want to go over here to, <clears throat> I want to stop right here for just a second. Second Peter 1 and 1. Now listen to what Peter said. Peter said, 
Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith, like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Do you know what like precious faith is? Like precious faith is faith that is of equal value. Equal value. Your faith is of equal value to Jesus' faith. Now think about that. You look at Him as your source and your faith touches the man of equal value. He looks at you as His source if you abide in me and I abide in you. You'll do and ask what you will and it shall be done for you. Christ in you is your hope of glory. The conceived faith of Jesus works through you by the Holy Spirit to fulfill the Word of God that is in you. Now watch this because I'm going to close right here. Your work comes from the knowledge of the truth and the ability to grasp and receive the commands of the Holy Spirit as the disciples did in Luke 10. Now watch this now. If you don't think that you are His source, I want you to see these scriptures. Listen to the Word. Verse 16 of Luke 10 said, He that heareth you heareth me. How could they not have been his source? How could they not have been his source? How could you not have been his source? If they hear you, they hear him, then you have become the source that Jesus uses to draw all men unto me and be a witness unto me and do greater works than even He has done because the greater one is the one that speaks out of you when you begin to speak the truth of the Word of God in like precious faith. Think on that. He said to the disciples, every going out to preach, He said, He that heareth you, heareth me. He that despiseth you, despiseth me. Source to source. He that despises you despises me. And he that despises me despises him that sent me. See, they were his source. And the 17, now watch this. Now watch this because this is going to be revolutionary if you get it. I want you to see it. And then I want you to internalize it. Now he had said to them, if they, they hear you, they hear me. I'm your source. If they hear what you say, I'm using you and you become my source to speak to the world. Do you see that? Then, he, then they came back to him and they said, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through your name. When they became his source, when they put his faith and His name applied to the world they walked through. When they put His name and His faith, the portion of faith that comes from Jesus Christ from the Scriptures I've read you and became the men and women that spoke according to what He said as His source, all of a sudden, the world around Him the devils begin to fall at their feet. And they begin to live in joy and rejoice because the faith of God had worked in their life and the world around them was changed. He said that even the devils are subject unto us because you are our source. See that? See them say that? They said, through thy name. You are our source. But it happened unto us. Do you see that? It happened unto us. That means that the source, the name of Jesus Christ, came through them. And it happened for them as they begin to operate on the faith of Jesus Christ. 
and on the word that Jesus gave them to do. And joy filled their heart. And joy came into the land. And those 70 men that would later go on to start the church of God, they said they, they knew the word. And the word said that he said to them, if they hear you, they're hearing me. I am your source and you are mine. In the world, by my faith, you will overcome the world because I have. I am the double portion of faith. I am the man of God that has died on Calvary's tree to give you the ability to be used by me and to live by me eternally in place, in time, to remain and stay forever. Glory to God. Your overcoming joy happens when you are abiding and He is abiding. Now watch this now because this is my last statement this morning. And the devil hears Jesus. Words of faith disseminating or coming out of your mouth as His source. And the devil has no choice but to obey the command because it's not coming from you. It's coming out of you, but not from you. It's coming from his mouth through faith of him through you so the devil recognizes Paul I know and Jesus I know and Luann I know and Ted I know and Michelle I know and Irma I know and Frank I know and Rita I know and Sharon I know and all of you I know you. I recognize you because the word that comes out of you is disseminated from the name of the man Jesus Christ and by His faith. Now you hear some close your eyes. <laughs> now church, completely different concept now. The faith. Completely different concept. Because He that hears you hears me. You're God's source in the earth. You're God's man and woman in the earth. Your faith has attached you to Jesus Christ. His faith has elevated you to the point where the greater one lives in you. And when the greater one lives in you, bless God, when the greater one lives in you, <coughs> then greater works will always come. And you will say with the disciples, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us. Through the name, through thy name, your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith, Jesus. I attach my faith to your faith. I attach my walk to your walk. My life is being lived as a source for Jesus to live through me. And I say that again, and listen to me, my life is your life, is your life, is your life living, being lived as a source for Jesus to live through you, for the faith of Jesus to live through you, for the faith of Jesus to be in you, for the faith of Jesus to operate and work and function through you, through you by His faith. Because it's by His faith you're justified. You can find Scripture in the Word of God that will tell you that it was through His faith that He was the propitiation or the satisfaction of sin. You'll find faith, a Scripture that will tell you He was the justification of sin. You'll find faith, Scripture that tells you by His faith that you were the, made the righteousness of God. You'll find Scripture that, that will tell you that you were redeemed by His faith. You'll find Scripture that tells you you were uh, given salvation by His faith. You'll find Scripture that tells you you're sanctified by His faith. And if any of those things are true, which the Word of God declares, then the plan of redemption for healing, for prosperity, for all of the things that put the devil to flight in your life belong to you through His faith. Through His faith. He did it. He did it. Everybody say in your, under your breath, say, He did it. Say, He did it. 
He did it for me. He did it for me. His faith did it for me. I have attached my faith to His faith. And now I am His source. And I live, nevertheless, I live through the faith of the, by the faith of the Son of God. I live by that faith. I witness by that faith. I walk by that faith. Not mine. I didn't die for myself. I live by His faith. 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 Now as you sit in that seat today, I want you to ask yourself, are you ready to turn loose of your own faith and believe on Him and let the faith of Jesus, from Jesus, begin to be the driving factor in the life that you live. The faith of Jesus to begin to be the driving factor, it will lead you to higher heights and deeper depth. It will lead you into a love of God that you can't even begin to fathom. It will lead you into a place where there will be nothing that can separate you from the love of God. It will lead you into a peace that will be so deep it will be past understanding. It will lead you into the joy of the Lord that becomes your strength. The faith of Jesus living in you, working in you, guiding you, and giving you greater, greater, greater works, things, times, places, and conditions in your life. Are you ready for that? If you are, I want you to stand to your feet and I want you to lift your hands. I want you to thank God. I want you to thank Him for the faith of Jesus Christ. I want you to thank you, thank Him because the faith that flows through your body, the words that come out of your mouth, you're the source that Jesus uses so that they can hear me. You're the source. You're the source. You're the source. You're the source. I want you to thank Him and say, Lord, I am your source. I am your source in the earth. You live in me. And because of that, my faith is from you. I am justified. I am righteous, sanctified, saved. And the plan of redemption came from your faith. Your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith. If you don't know Him today and you've not been saved and you've never given your heart to Him, it is His faith that is giving you salvation. It is His faith that is saying to you, attach your faith to mine and be saved. Attach your faith to mine and be clean. Be cleansed, become whole. And my faith will be in you. And my faith will bless you and my faith will keep you. And my faith will take you to a place, a time, and put you in a condition where you abide in me and I abide in you and my word abides in you. Now you can ask anything you wish. And my Father who is in heaven because He loved me, loves you. And if you've kept my commandments, He will bless you and He will take you to places that you have never been nor ever understood but only have the desire to be. There's a place for you. There's a place for you. It's in the abiding position. It's where He abides in you and you abide in Him. It's the double portion of faith. Holy Spirit, we thank you today. We honor you today. We give you glory today. God, as these stand today, having heard the message of faith, having heard the word that said, if they hear you, they're hearing me. Everyone in this room is a source. They're a source of the message of Jesus Christ. They're a source of the faith of Jesus Christ. Today, God, as their hands are raised, as their hearts are centered on you, as they're focused on the Word of God, I pray today, God, that your faith, your faith, your faith, Jesus, the faith of Jesus, 
would come into them for living, would come into them for doing, would come into them for strengthening, would come into them for greater works, would come into them for greater peace, would come into them for greater joy, would come into them, God, to be able to say with the disciples, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us. Through your name. Now, Father, we thank you today. We honor you today. Worship him just another minute, will you? Just raise your hands and worship him. Just raise your hands and worship him. Through the faith of God. Through the faith of Jesus.
out of your belly will flow a river of living water. Amen?